Is your auto mower giving you a no loop signal message? Are you getting a flashing blue light on your charging station? Do you have a brake somewhere in your underground cable? I'm gonna show you ways that you can troubleshoot, try to find out where the line brake is and how to fix it up next. Hey everyone, my name is Jeff and on this channel I do all sorts of different tech tip tutorial videos and more, including videos on this auto mower that I got. This is a Husqvarna 115H and of course today I'm getting the flashing blue light of death uh, or the flashing blue light meaning that my boundary wire has a break in it somewhere and I'm going to show you guys what I was able to do to find that break and hopefully you can do the same thing. And if you want to check out some of my other uh, Husqvarna automower videos, those will be linked down in the video description below. But in the meantime, let's show you what's going on and what you can do to get things fixed. When I go to the charging station, I get this flashing blue light, which is also indicating that I don't have a complete loop. Now this loop goes all the way around my yard, the front yard and the backyard. Uh, so that is a lot of line, that's a lot of wire to uh, have to inspect for a break. Let's go around to the back of the charging station. So from here you can see I've got three different wires coming out of my charging station. These outer two, these are the boundary wire. This middle wire, this is going down and straight out the bottom of my charger. That's my guide wire, which allows the mower to help it find its way back or send it out. Um, what you can do is you can actually swap a boundary wire with your guide wire and that is going to uh, help tell you whether the brake is on that end in between the guide wire and say this boundary wire or uh, vice versa. So in uh, a first step here I'm going to pull out my guide wire in the middle and then this boundary wire that's closest to me and I'm going to swap those. So I'm putting my boundary wire on the middle now and my guide wire on the outside I flip-flopped these two these guys are plugged in now we're gonna go check the front of the charging station okay charging station is still giving me a flashing blue light so that's gonna tell me that the brake isn't necessarily between the guide wire and my full backyard it's probably most likely somewhere towards the front so I'm back at the uh, back of the charging station I'm gonna flip-flop these back to the way they were okay Boundary wires are on the outside. This time I'm going to flip flop the guide wire with this other boundary wire. So pulling that one out, putting the boundary wire in the middle, putting my guide wire on the outside. Coming around to the front of my charging station, we now have a flashing, I'm going to say that's a yellow light. So that is going to tell me that the break in my wire is somewhere between the guide wire and the front half of my yard. Just by doing this quick step I've saved myself from having to check at least half of my yard and real quick as we do in all the videos on this channel I've hidden Tinker who's our little hidden robot he looks just like this guy in my shirt and he briefly pops up in all the videos that I do on this channel including this video so keep your eyes out for Tinker and if you're the first person to spot him popping up take note of the timestamp or the amount of time into this video that you spotted him popping up and let me know that down in the comments section below and if you are the first person to spot him I'll put your name on our Tinker Forward Hall of Fame page as well as give you a shout out in one of my future videos a shout out just like Yara Sala and Arash Adamian latest viewers on this channel to find Tinker in one of my recent videos. So let's talk about what I used. This was the uh, Cole Soul uh, Underground Wire Locator and its main functions here for tracking and locating underground buried wires and other hidden wires. And I will link to this particular product down in my video description. If you do wanna check this out, purchase one for yourself. Um, you can uh, take a look at everything that's here and I'll spin around to the back for the uh, transmitter specifications. You can pause the video if you want to take a closer look at that, but I'm going to keep moving. Um, essentially this is what I use to find the wire break and I'll just go through what comes with this. You get your instructions just to kind of get you going very quickly and uh, you get a nice little handy case to put all your components in. And then there's two main components to this. There's the uh, wire locator transmitter which you're gonna plug in on one end to uh, start sending a signal through the wire. And you'll get some batteries with this. Make sure you put your nine volt battery in there and then close it up. The other more important thing is gonna be the wire locator. 
and you're going to walk around with this thing and again you're going to get some batteries uh, another nine volt you're going to stick that in there and then this has an on off switch on the side this transmitter is going to emit, emit a tone and honestly it's a very annoying tone so you do also get some headphones with it um, it's up to you if you want to use them or not i'll have you take a listen to what it sounds like when we go outside this also comes with a light so if i suppose if you're doing this at night or if you needed to see you have that as well but this is everything that comes included with the underground wire locator let's head outside so let's talk about setting up the underground wire locator you've got your two boundary wires that are going into your charging station this is my husqvarna station and i'm going to pull one of these out where i believe i know where the break is and you've got a red and a black, a positive and a negative uh, test wires for your transmitter. And I'm going to clip the positive wire onto the, uh, onto the boundary wire that I've unplugged here. Now the negative has to go to ground. So easiest thing you can do is go ahead and take a screwdriver, stick it in the ground, and then go ahead and just attach this to that screwdriver and now you can set your transmitter to cable scan now from this point uh, you can use the receiver and this is going to start emitting a tone as you follow the cable so you can see here i've got my power i'm going to go ahead and turn that on and then i've got a volume that's right here and that's the tone that you're going to hear when you are over the wire. And essentially you're gonna walk along the path of this wire until you hear this tone and you can adjust the volume. I would recommend using the headphones. So the kicker is you have to be right over this wire in order to get that tone. And if your wire is buried, it's even harder. So to me, the fact that this was a dangling wire was kind of frustrating to me because the thing would sway back and forth and then it would make it harder for me to determine if it was right over the wire or not. So I just got myself a nice plastic piece of PVC. This is something we had laying around. I got a piece of duct tape and I just attached this to that pole. And now at least using the pole when I'm walking around, I can hold the thing steady. So I'm just going to keep walking around listening for this tone until I don't hear a tone or until the tone gets really quiet. Um, that's going to be a potential area where I'm going to know I've got a break. So I actually came across my cable break. It's going to be right here. It actually came out of one of the couplings that I had installed in my yard and I just want you to hear the difference so you could hear the nice clear tone that we were getting near the beginning where the break is if I turn the volume up on the tester this is what it sounds like when I'm getting close to that break and that is nothing like the tone that we were hearing up top that tone was a lot clearer you can definitely hear like there's static in it. There, it is not making that connection. So now I can see where this line has come out of the coupler and these are just the three wire couplers that you can get online. If you happen to need more of these, I will also put a link to where you can pick up more of these online. But essentially you are inserting all three wires or if you aren't using your guide wire, just your two boundary wires. And then to make the full connection, you're pressing the top of this coupler all the way down with some pliers. Make sure all these wires are completely inserted all the way in. I'm just going ahead using some pliers and gently uh, pushing down on this coupler and that is compressing itself onto those wires, making sure that these wires are all snug and now I have made my full connection again. And if this video is helping you out, take a second right now, smash that like button. It helps out this video and I appreciate it. So with my brake reconnected, I am going to take off the transmitter. So we're gonna turn this off. Let's unplug our negative, our positive. We're gonna plug our boundary wire back into the port on the back. 
And as you can see, now we have a solid green light and our loop is complete once again. So let me know down in the comments section below if this video is helpful or if you were able to fix the problem that you might have been having with your auto mower. And I've also done a complete setup video on my Husqvarna 115H mower with lots of tips on how I laid my boundary cable, uh, went through some troubleshooting and more. You can check out links to that video down in this video description or popping up here at the end of this video, as well as other uh, power tool review videos I've done and do-it-yourself projects that I do weekly on this channel. So my name is Jeff. This is Tinker Ford, and as always, I appreciate you watching. Be sure to make every day awesome, and I will see you in the next video.